and welcome back to Reflect Forward. I'm your host, Carrie Siggins. I'm so glad you're here today. So today is an advice from a CEO episode, and I want to talk about trust. So trust is important in every relationship, and it's such an important fundamental aspect of a healthy culture. And with all of the things that are happening with so many people leaving their organizations and, and looking for new jobs, a lot of it comes down to people not feeling valued, trusted, cared about, included. And so I wanted to talk about trust because I think it's such a key aspect of what we're trying to do here and an important thing to build. And it also has lots of different meanings. So recently we asked a question about trust on our quarterly performance reviews. We have these conversations with our employees or employees led once a quarter where we find out what's going well, what's not going well, course correct, talk about goals, talk about company issues, talk about company initiatives. They're really fantastic. All employee led. And we asked the question, when has your manager ever broken your trust? And we had hoped that it would spark really radically candid conversations. Now we are a very candid company. We teach people radical candor by Kim Scott. Uh, everybody goes through that as part of the own it mindset training curriculum we have. Uh, and we have, I think done a pretty good job of creating a culture of feedback. Well, the question didn't land well. People were wondering what we were trying to do. Why are we asking these questions? Are we trying to, to poke at something? Are we trying to to send a message. What's the agenda here? So we had to send out an email and say, no, this is just a great opportunity to have candid conversations. We're a keep it real organization. Trust is something that's really important to us. It's really important to have a solid relationship with your manager. This is just an opportunity to, to talk about it. So I think people settled down and some really great conversations happened, but a lot of the uh, answers came back. Nope, we're good. Totally trust you. Never have broken my trust. And I realized that there's lots of different ways that we can frame trust, right? We can frame it around how other people have broken our trust. I don't necessarily trust you 100% because I don't feel like you trust me 100%. Trust has so many different meanings, right? And this became really clear when uh, last week, my executive management team and I were talking about how many meetings we have. We are over meetings. And a lot of it comes down to too many people in meetings because people feel like they have to either one, be there because they're not in the know if they're not. So they don't trust that we have a good process of communication, uh, decision-making after meetings. So they have to come and listen to the meeting to know what's going on. Or two, they want people in the meetings, like one of my executive team members, to make a decision because they don't feel comfortable making those decisions, whether they are empowered or not. I think there's fear around making the wrong decision. And, uh, and, and it made me realize we have not done enough to create that level of trust with that next level of management, what we call our joint management team, which is anybody who's not an executive team member. And I put one of my directors on the spot because... He used to come to me all the time and ask my opinion about everything and, and want to get my ideas before he would make a decision. And I told him, no, you know, what's the decision you want to make? And I would say, yes, that's a great idea. Let's try it. Or, hey, here's a couple things to think about. But I really wanted him to gain more confidence in his own decision making skills. So I asked him in this meeting, Mike, you feel really comfortable making decisions now without having to come to me, like wh what happened? How did that work? And he thought about it and I could tell he was uncomfortable. And he said, well, I used to come to you and you would always put it back on me and you would tell me, Hey, yeah, that's a great idea. I want you to be able to implement these things without having to come to me. This is a decision you can make without me. And if it's, if it's a mistake, it's okay. If it doesn't turn out the way that you expected, it's okay. We all learn from your mistakes, right? I literally am where I am today because of all of the horrible <laughs> mistakes I've made in my life. It's okay. We can fix almost anything. Gain confidence in your decision-making skills. And he practiced and practiced and practiced. And over the years, he's learned to trust himself. And I trust his decision-making process. And I really do that with my whole executive management team. They operate with a ton of autonomy. And it's because we've taken the time to build that trust and to build those relationships so that they understand what the expectations are. They know the company vision. They know the goals. They know what kind of decisions to make. And if they're not sure, absolutely, they come to me. We talk through it. But they're making you know, 
75, 80, 90% of their decisions without ever consulting me. And that's a really great place to be. So why haven't we done that with our management team? So then this week I get a call from this director and he says, that was the best executive management meeting we've had in such a long time. You have given me so much food for thought. That conversation made me feel really uncomfortable. I didn't like that you put me on the spot. And then I realized like I did deserve to be on the spot and this is a really good thing. And I started thinking about like, why, why do I have to make all the decisions for my team? Why do I have to be in all these meetings? And I realized I don't, I don't trust my team. I don't trust them to make those decisions. And it's not because of them. It's because I'm afraid of making a bad decision, a wrong decision. And so I put that onto them. So he said, I changed the whole tone of this quarter's own chats around this question of trust to really start talking about how trust is means all kinds of different things. And he said, I had these best performance conversations that I've ever had. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me. It has completely changed my thinking around trust. I was just thinking from this one thing, like, you know, do I trust that like, you know, KP likes me, that KP is going to always tell me what's going on. I didn't think about it from all the different aspects that trust really comes from. So I love the question that we asked, this question of trust, because it actually ended up doing exactly what I was hoping it was going to do, even though it made people feel uncomfortable. It sparked some brilliant conversations. And I told my team, if you get an answer that is, nope, everything's good, you need to dig. Start by asking, so tell me about a time that another manager broke your trust. What happened? Because then you can start to understand, oh, these are the triggers, the trust triggers that people have. For example, mine is lying. I hate it when people lie to me. Tell me the truth. I will help you through anything. I rarely get mad. But but if you lie to me, if you cover something up, like that is my biggest trust breaker. I've been burned lots of times with that. Another one of my managers, when I was having this conversation said, you know, I've really lost respect for managers and trust in managers when they don't follow through. They say they're going to do something and then they don't, and they, they don't talk about it. Right. They just pretend it never happened. Like those are some things that are really powerful insights because everybody has a different trust trigger. And then once you figure out, okay, this is the trust trigger. You eat one, either have that great piece of information so that you can be more aware or two, you can start asking questions about, okay, well, maybe there is a time when I did something like this. You know, I remember X, Y, Z happened. Anyway, <laughs> nevertheless, despite the uncomfortableness of this question, it did exactly what I was hoping it would do and really create dialogue around what trust means. So as I was thinking about this, I found a great um, article, a blog on uh, Psychology Today that talked about 10 behaviors that demonstrate trust. And I really liked this and I wanted to share it with you because I think it helps give a bigger picture of all the different things that what trust can mean, especially because you want to be perceived as trusting and trustworthy. That's how you build a strong relationship, a trust-based relationship. It's always hard to accurately assess ourselves and if we're doing a good job on this or not. Um, but if you do these kinds of things, uh, you'll reduce your blind spots and, um, and gain more awareness around the actions that you are taking to either build or diminish trust. So anyway, according to this article on psychologytoday.com by a lovely woman named Nan S. Russell, um, she said, these are, here are 10 behaviors that demonstrate trust at work. And I would like you to consider how many are part of your operating style. So first you influence more by your actions than your words. I love this one because you can say whatever you want to say, but people are watching what you do. So if you, um, don't have alignment between what you do and what you say, the example that I gave you about one of my direct reports who sh shared the. I hate it when people don't follow through conversation. This is really important. Make sure that there's a very little gap between your words and your actions that will create trust. Even if people don't necessarily understand or always agree with your actions and words. Number two, she says you are self-aware. Um, you know how I am a huge proponent of developing deep self-awareness. 
self-awareness allows you to know the impact that you're making on people. And especially when you screw things up and you know it, you can go back and say, oh, hey, you know, I interrupted you there, or I didn't take the time to really sit down and hear you out. And I know that doesn't create trust. So I apologize. Let's talk through this. Self-awareness is, is key. Number three, and I know this is hard for a lot of people, but you give trust first. I'm a very trusting person. I always give away trust maybe too freely. Um, I assume good intentions. I've been burned before, uh, and that's okay. I don't change my trusting behaviors. Uh, I don't know that I can, but it is something that's really important. A lot of people won't give trust until it's earned, and it is a double-edged sword. People aren't going to feel comfortable trusting you if they feel like, oh, that person doesn't trust me. So it really takes time to develop that. And it, and it evolves over time, but you need to demonstrate that you give trust to your employees so that they give trust back to you. If you say, nope, you got to earn my trust, man, whew, that is a really tough thing for people to feel comfortable doing. Number four, you use trust elevating communication techniques. So that means what kind of words do you use? Do you use positive words or do you use negative words? Do you cross your arms when you're talking to somebody or do you lean in and smile? Those are all different verbal and nonverbal communication cues that you can give that say, hey, you can trust me and I trust you. Number five, bring the best of who you are to work. So I love this. I actually just gave a, a talk to all my employees on on how to make it safe to speak up in a peer-to-peer -peer situation. And this is so important, right? How you show up every single day matters. If you're grumpy, short, snippy, silent, crossing your arms, that shows people that, that you're disinterested. You don't really want to hear what they have to say, and it doesn't build trust. So you really need to own how you show up. It doesn't mean that you have to have a great day every single day, but you certainly need to think about your actions and your words and your behaviors because you're sending people a message one way or another. I can be trusted and I trust you or not. Number six, you want the best for others. This is such an important aspect. Servant leadership, right? You can't be a servant leader if you don't want the best for others. If you don't want the best for others, they're not going to trust you and you're not showing that you demonstrate trust. So if you operate from kindness, compassion, tolerance, you know, listening, then you really showing that you want the best for others, even in incredibly difficult conversations. Number seven, you tell considered stories. I love this one. I'm such a storyteller. Uh, this was on my last advice from a CEO, the power of telling stories as a leader. Uh, if you can do experience to share through storytelling, people will connect so much more. When you share your vulnerability through a story, people will appreciate it. They'll hear it. They'll connect on a much more empathetic and emotional level, and that builds trust. So tell stories, make them impactful, and use them to be able to build those connections and positively influence the culture, and that will build trust. Number eight, you operate with dependable politics. I love this because there are so many politics in the workplace and politics in a workplace does not create trust. And if you play nasty politics, like getting ahead, manipulating, all of those things that, you know, might make you do well in the moment, but erodes relationships, whew, not a good thing to be. So do things the right way get things done the right way, use integrity, ethics, and positive intention so that people know that, yeah, you might be able to navigate the company politics, but you really do it on the up and up and that builds trust. Number nine, you collaborate, cooperate, consider, and contribute. The four C's. I love that. Collaborate, cooperate, consider, and contribute. That is what all relationships are built on. They are two-way streets. You have to collaborate. You have to cooperate with people. You have to consider what people are saying. And you also have to contribute to the relationship. These are how value-based relationships are built. And it's how you should show up in every interaction. And finally, number 10, you demonstrate competence as your starting point, right? 
So all of those things are great, but you still actually have to be good at what you do to build trust. You could be the very best relationship builder, show empathy and care for people, listen. But if you are not competent at your job, people will not trust you. You have to do what you say you're going to do. You have to do it well. You have to create high performance all around you through your own actions as a leader. It's so important. So competence, competence, competence as a starting point, incredibly important. So I loved that list uh, and I wanted to share it with you because I thought she did a great job of outlining different ways that you can build trust within your organization. And so I hope that you took something useful from that. Okay, so my question of the episode comes from somebody on LinkedIn uh, who read my blog on the power of asking questions, and he said, Carrie, what's your favorite question to ask? And that is a tough one because I love asking questions, and uh, it's my superhuman power, my super leadership power, the ability to get people to tell me things, and it's because I just ask questions. But I think my favorite question, and it ties back to the conversation that I had with my director around helping him build his confidence around decision-making. And that is, what do you think? What do you think? That is such a powerful question. When somebody comes to you with an idea, wanting to discuss something to get your opinion, as a leader, you should never give your opinion first. <laughs> well, maybe I shouldn't say never, but rarely give your opinion first, especially when it's around somebody else's idea or brainstorm without saying, well, what do you think? It is, it's such a confidence builder when you show that you're truly interested in what somebody else says. And especially when you say, yeah, okay, good. I think that's great. Go for it. People build that confidence in themselves when they know that, okay, I can, I can make these decisions. I can share this idea. I can give my opinion. What do you think also creates psychological safety? People are scared to say something wrong. They don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to make a wrong decision. And when you ask, what do you think? It's pulling that out of them. That's such a great example of this um, in that, that training that I gave, the Own It Mindset training that I gave on making it safe to speak up peer to peer. We went into breakout sessions and I always go into a breakout session because I love talking with my employees and I happen to be in one with one of my French employees and he is very timid in his use of English. He doesn't have confidence around it. And he said, I don't feel safe speaking up, not because other people make me feel that way, but it's because I don't have confidence I'm going to pick the right word and I don't want to be embarrassed. And so I said, well, what is, what's one thing that we can do to help that Jean-Baptiste? And he said, ask my opinion. I said, if I ask you, what do you think? Does that make it easier? He said, yes, because then I know that you really want to hear and it forces me to do it because so often I will just not say what I think because I don't want to get it wrong. And if nobody asks me, then I can't muster up enough courage to say, wait, wait, I have something to say. Oh my gosh, this was so powerful. The power of what do you think? So that is my favorite question, um, even though I have lots of others. But if I had one that I had to say, put into your repertoire, ask, what do you think? Okay, that is Reflect Forward for today. I hope this was advice that you can implement. And I appreciate you listening. And I'll see you next week. I've got another great interview coming up. Somebody who, I'll just say it, wrote The CEO Test, which is a book that I love. And uh, and I, I know you all know that. Okay. If you like this podcast, please, please, please share, write a review, rate, comment. Um, it always is very helpful and I appreciate your engagement. Have a great day.